If you've got a modern common rail diesel engine, here's five cracky mods that'll improve your performance and also reliability. Now, I'm talking about a 25 to 30% increase in power and torque. I'm talking better fuel savings, and also you probably get years and years extra life out of your engine. So the best thing about all of these mods, the most expensive is 1500 bucks. So let's get right into it. If you've never seen exactly how much soot can build up in a relatively new vehicle, you'd be absolutely shocked. Well, the concerning thing is we had a customer not too long ago, had a 200 series cruiser. It was about three years old with just under 30,000 Ks on it. And honestly, the customer thought it had over 100,000 by looking at the pictures we'd shown him. Yeah, it was just caked, was it? It was just like absolutely sticky tar-like matter that was just absolutely caked through the top of the intake manifold. The first mod I want to mention is probably more of a maintenance mod than anything else. I'm talking about an intake clean. Now, my 79 series, when I first got it, you know, brand new vehicle, after I'd done about 50,000 Ks in it, I was shocked about how much soot had been built up in that intake before we ripped it apart and cleaned it out, mate. This is something you see quite regularly, right? Yeah, look, it, and it's, people think, you know, maybe it's only got 20, 30,000 Ks on a one VD motor at 25, we're starting to see them start sooting up. But, you know, I can tell you on a common rail diesel, the EGRs are pretty active. They're putting those exhaust gases in. We've got crankcase coming up from the oil vapors and those two combine create that sticky soot matter all through your manifold and your upper valve train and that's what takes away power, takes away the performance of your vehicle. So by doing a quick intake clean you can basically get rid of all that soot that's built up in the intake and then what, realise the true performance of the vehicle. Yeah well it gets the car back to what it was like from factory and gets rid of all the, the soot contamination from your motor and, and makes it you know, really come alive and breathe the way it should. Now is it an easy process to do? Yeah, look, it, obviously with all the cars we have in here, we do an on-car chemical soot clean as well as obviously inspecting inside the manifold to make sure it's all in good order before and after we do the work. And I'll tell you now, it certainly is something before we dyno the cars and tune them, if they've done a few Ks, it's a must. It's a great starting point for anybody who's got a modern common rail diesel engine and it doesn't matter if it's got 20, 30,000 Ks on it or 250,000 Ks, in my opinion, it's a good place to start with that motor to bring it back clean the intake, get it properly cleaned out. And that's what I'm talking about as well. You know, you need to go to a reputable workshop to get it done properly. So by doing an intake clean, you're gonna get your efficiency back in the motor. You're probably gonna get improved uh, throttle response, not to mention you'll probably save a few bucks at the Bowser as well. So it's a great starting point to give the old intake a clean and that way you know what you're dealing with. So after you've got an intake clean, the next mod that I recommend doing is fitting yourself a catch can. In fact, this is actually the first mod I did on my 200 series from brand new, was fitting a catch can. Look at how much oil one catches just after 20,000 kilometers of driving on a fairly new diesel four-wheel drive. Just imagine all of this going back into your intake. If this goes back into your intake, it'll mix with the soot from your exhaust gas recirculation system, which creates this thick black paste, which will build up in your intake and reduce your engine's power and fuel efficiency as less air can get in. You can easily fit these at home yourself. In fact, I've fitted one to my 200 series for Dirty 30 and Sooty. You only need to mount the catch can and install two hoses, one from the crankcase in your engine, then one from the catch can to your engine's intake, like this. It's that easy. Not all catch cans are the same, so make sure you fit one that has these three things. It's got to have a filter inside like this one. They can be replaced easily. I replace mine every 40,000 Ks, or when it looks well used. It's got to have quality hoses, fittings and hose clamps. If it's a model specific catch can in a kit, these hoses should be pre-cut to the length needed for an easy install. And finally, a custom made bracket for your four wheel drive that uses existing mounting points in your engine bay to make the install easier. And number three is a custom dyno tune. Now, bang for buck, I reckon there's no better performance uh, upgrade you can do for your vehicle. So, why would you want to tune in the first place? If you tow a boat or camper trailer, having more power and torque will help you when you're off-road. For overtaking or long drives, as you're not working the engine as hard when towing. Plus, when you're overtaking, having a bit more torque down low to perform the manoeuvre quickly and efficiently is far safer than trying to overtake a big truck in an underpowered vehicle. Off-road, if you're carrying more weight, having more power on tap means you have the ability to keep momentum up. Adding accessories to your vehicle, like bigger tyres, a dual battery system, drawers and a fridge will add a fair bit of weight to your vehicle and can make it sluggish. A good reliable tune will help you get your engine running better and make your vehicle much more drivable on and off the road. You're not working the engine too hard. Because the tune will bring torque and power in the optimum rev range to suit your application, it means you don't need to flog your vehicle everywhere just to get it moving. 
For those worried about reliability after a tune, it won't affect your engine's reliability so long as the tune is done within the safe limits. A good tuner will work hard to keep your vehicle's air-fuel ratios and power output well within the design limits of your engine and supporting modifications. Make sure you go to a tuner that has a dyno, does pre-tune inspections to pick up any mechanical issues and ask you the right questions about your four-wheel drive. For example, do you tow, how many k's is it done and the like. A good tuner uses all this information to tune it extremely safely so you won't have any issues. Mate, the next mod that I want to talk about is not necessarily a common rail mod, but more of an auto mod. And the fact is that most diesels these days are coming out with autos behind them. I'm talking about lock-up kits, mate. Can you explain how they work? The lock-up kit locks the torque converter up and gets a better drive for the vehicle and stops it from hunting between like fifth and sixth gear on the highway. The other big benefits as well, you see the reduction in transmission temperature. So if you're towing, you mm. want to obviously minimise that temperature in the transmission. And the other big benefit of having a transmission tune, which also changes the shift points, which we spoke about in the fifth and sixth gear, but you see a better saving in the Bowser as well with the, with the diesel. So it drives better, better saving in fuel. Now the number one thing, of course, that kills an auto is heat. You get too much heat in them, the lock-up kit's going to reduce that heat. Now if you're into towing, it's probably a must-have accessory. So with the torque converter being locked up, you're not getting as well the hunting between the fifth and sixth gears. That's what takes that temperature out of the transmission. It's not spinning, not creating heat. Therefore, your auto is going to thank you for it miles down the track. It will. And finally, the last mod that I can recommend for a common rail diesel motor is a secondary fuel filter. Now, in my opinion, it really is cheap insurance. Now, Australia doesn't have the best quality fuel out there. And the other thing to consider is that your whole fuel system, I'm talking about your injectors, your pump and everything, to do with a common rail diesel is so expensive. So you basically want to try and get some cheap insurance in the form of a secondary filter. That way you know that even if you do pick up a bad batch of fuel, you're going to catch any of the water and contaminants before it gets into that expensive system. Because modern engines are so highly strung, it means that any contaminants in your fuel, even the smallest amounts, can literally destroy your fuel system and even your engine. For example, a common rail injector can operate at pressures above 20,000 psi, just imagine if one grain of sand or dirt got into that injector at that pressure and the damage it could do. Adding a second fuel filter gives you a second line of defense against bad fuel. It means that you're basically cleaning or filtering the fuel twice or doubling the chance that your engine receives the best fuel it can. Make sure you choose a filter that uses a reputable filter cartridge so they're easy to find parts for. It also ensures that you're installing a filter with extensive research and development behind it some even come with a water or contamination alarm so you can shut your engine off as soon as there is an issue. Look for one with a glass inspection bowl like this, so you can visibly inspect the fuel going into your engine, or one with an alarm that'll go off if it senses water. Look for one that's an easy DIY install, that is designed to fit your vehicle and comes with the appropriate brackets, hoses and fittings. For my vehicles, I prefer a pre-filter, as it means your factory filter is getting the cleanest fuel it can get, and all the sensors are operating on a cleaner level of fuel. Best of all, it's an easy DIY mod that you can do yourself in your shed at home. All you need to do is install the bracket, filter and run the fuel lines in line to your factory filter like this and you're done. If your filter has an alarm system like this one, make sure you install it within eyesight of the driver so you can quickly react if any bad fuel makes its way into the filter. Many of these mods, of course, are DIY. You do them in your own driveway, but there's plenty that should only be done at a workshop. That's where Ultimate Diesel Tuning really come into their own because you can leave your vehicle there. They can, they can do an intake clean. They can install a catch can, a secondary filter, also a lock-up converter, as well as tune your vehicle. And that's one of the reasons why I trust Ultimate Diesel Tuning with my vehicle. They recently did a tune on the big 200 here. And I've got to say, it drives like a completely new vehicle. Well, there you go, guys. There's my top five mods that you should do to a common rail diesel motor. Now, there's obviously a lot more mods you can do and that's where I'd like to hear from you guys let us know in the comments below if you think I've missed any crucial mods that you'd do to one of these motors behind me at the end of the day you've got to realize that these motors are very expensive I mean at the end of the day if you destroy the fuel system and the motor you're, you're looking at about a 10 to 15 even twenty thousand dollar rebuild so it makes sense with a couple of budget mods it's really cheap insurance to protect the longevity and reliability of these motors Anyway, that's enough from me. I hope you like and subscribe to the Full Drive 24-7 channel, and I'll see you around next time.